In this video, we're going to talk about a dial indicator, which is one of the tools that we discuss in our instrumentation learning objective. Uh, so here is a dial indicator. We've looked at this before, what the tool looks like. There's a, uh, the, the, the dial moves as, as you push the um, shaft. I can't remember what the technical term is for the end of it. The pin, the shaft, the anvil, maybe. Anyway, um, we've got, got some discussion questions here. So the first one, why? what is runout and why is it important? So first off, runout is um, something that a dial indicator is used to measure. Um, so when, when we get into the more technical definition of what runout is, I wanted to look at, uh, this is an old GD&T uh, document that uh, a fellow engineer gave me some time ago. And we're not going to really get into GD&T so much, but um, runout is something that's discussed. Uh, it's it, Runout is one type of GD&T, geometric dimensioning and tolerancing. Um, <clears throat> so this, this uh, page right here kind of discusses runout a little bit. And there are two types of runout. One is circular runout, and one is just, um, uh, uh, what, I guess, linear runout, you could call it, or, or, or total runout. Um, Circular runout is when you have an object, for example, you know, a, a shaft or something like this, and, and this, this shaft is rotating. Uh, and, and then you, you would put your dial indicator right here. And as, as uh, the shaft is rotating, uh, you, you'd get some reading on your dial indicator. Now, if it's a perfect shaft, um, the, the external diameter is perfectly concentric about the axis of the shaft, then you wouldn't see it any any indication on your dial indicator it would be zero but if if it was you know uh, there's some irregularity in the shape of the diameter then as you turn it you might like uh, the the dial indicator might might displace a little bit as you're turning it and that's that's circular runout that's how you measure circular runout um, I don't have a, a shaft with some kind of irregularity like that but Let's see if, if we just draw something here. I'm wondering why is that so important to know? Is it like a, a particular scenario which you really need to have the run out at zero? Yeah, where the heck where are our notes here? Oh, right there, thank you. Um, so let's see, why is runout important? Uh, if you want to ensure that something has a true circular cross section, then uh, runout is an important metric to measure, right? Like if you have a, a shaft that has to be press fit into a ball bearing, mm -hmm. um, you, you might want to know that you have a, you know, a, a perfect circular cross section there, that the shaft diameter is constant throughout. So that's an example of where uh, circular runout might be important to measure. What would you do if it isn't? <clears throat> um, if it isn't, <clears throat> if, if there's like too much material on it, you could send it back to your machine shop and have them machine away the offending material. If there's, if there's too little material and you, you're talking specifically about the application of putting a shaft into a ball bearing, there's not a whole lot you can do. You might have to remake your shaft. Can we zoom out or is this? Uh, yeah. So what if you have a shaft and you want to measure a run out, but then you have to measure at every specific spot, right? Mm. Um, what if it's fine here, but it's not fine here? Mm -hmm. How would you detect that? Would you really have to measure every single spot? Well, um, if you had your shaft spinning fast enough, you know, a, a lot of times when, when you're measuring run out, you might put a part like in a lathe, so it's spinning pretty fast, and if it's if it's spinning pretty fast, you know your RPMs are high enough, then you can just continually move the dial indicator down the length of the shaft because it's spinning so quickly. Does that make sense? That absolutely makes sense. Yep. Okay. All right, and and that would be um, that would be your your uh, I don't I don't think linear runout is the correct term to use, but just uh, straight run out, right? If you're moving your dial indicator this way, um, uh, that that would be how you measure run out versus circular run out where you're just basically keeping it in the same position. Um, 
And, and also, um, when you're measuring straight runout, your, your shaft is, is not rotating. So, for example, if, if we had, um, let's say that we had, we had a block that looks something like this, and then we have a hole in the block like this. And then we want to we want to put a, a shaft through this, so you know something. This is not fit very well, but imagine there are really close tolerances between the shaft OD and the the bore diameter in these two <clears throat> arms of our our block. And we want to make sure that we can install this shaft, and it's a precision fit. Um, it, for for an application like that, your 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 runout is going to be really important because what if this shaft actually looked like that? Now I've exaggerated it so that it's very clear that there is a bend in the shaft. But if you have your if you have your dial indicator and you're moving it along this shaft, right? Like you'd have zero displacement here. In fact, it, we, we'd have to start with, with some displacement. But a, a, as you move it down, you start getting, you know, more and more displacement and then less. So you can see how much uh, run out there is along the length of your shaft. And it, for a precision fit like this, if it's more than, you know, a few thousandths of an inch, you might have a, a really hard time getting that shaft in place. So that, that's an example of when you might want to measure run out. Yeah, it makes total sense. Okay. All right, let's see. Uh, what are relative heights and why is it important to measure them? So one of the things we said, what is most important to know, often used to measure run out or relative heights. And that's where that, that question came from. Um, so just generally speaking, Relative heights, uh, let's say that you have a, a block that looks something like this. And let's say that um, you've got some kind of, I don't know, mating feature over here. And you want this entire block to be able to slide underneath this, this overhang. And then let's further say that we have another component that needs to fit right here. And then this, this whole little subassembly needs to slide underneath this overhang. And let's, let's say that it's a precision fit for whatever application we're talking about here. Um, in this situation, you would, uh, you could measure this distance right here and make sure that that's, that distance is less than this distance right here. And you could, you could also measure, um, the, the height of this block right here, but to ensure that this entire subassembly will slide really easily under this overhang, you would want to know for certain that um, this distance right here was the same as the height of the block. And so when we say relative heights, that's, that's what I'm referring to, the, the relative height between this surface here and this surface here as opposed to the total height of this block, which would be from, if we say this is ground down here, so it would be from ground up to the total height of the block, that would be the height of the block, whereas the relative height of this step is just the distance between those surfaces there. So how does the dial indicator help you figure out the relative height? Okay, do you want to take a crack at that? How would you use it? Mm, I thought that we are going to use this to determine how straight the surface was, because if this is at an angle, that could be a problem here. Okay. But to relative, for heights, I wouldn't use this device for heights. I would use uh, a measuring device like calipers. Yeah, I don't know how. Yeah, um, a, a challenge using calipers to measure a height like this is that, in fact, let me get a pair of calipers. As any engineer should, uh, we always have calipers laying around here in the office. Somewhere. Somewhere. <laughs> okay. So using calipers to measure height, you, you have to 
you have to use this this like depth gauge on it. And if you're trying to be really precise, it can be difficult to make sure that this surface of your calipers is is perfectly straight, like perpendicular to the the surface that you're you know butting up against. And depending on like if, if you angle it a little bit, uh, I'm exaggerating it, but but it's e easy to angle you know a, a few degrees one way or the other like that when you're using this this depth gauge feature on the calipers and <clears throat> that can result in a measurement error of you know a few thousands of an inch and if you're trying to be really precise that that can have a significant impact whereas um, a, a dial indicator and this is probably not shown in the correct scale <clears throat> to, to measure um, relative depth you, you'd probably looking at, be looking at a step that's you know a lot a lot uh, a lot less than what I have here so maybe something more like this so you'd have your dial indicator fixed in position it would be on some sort of a stand and you'd be able to just move your part across I'll, I'll move the dial indicator so well, I can move the iPad so you you'd move your your part like this you know and then drops down and you look at the, the difference between those two measurements and then you can get a really precise reading on what that relative depth is or, or relative uh, height difference is between the two steps. That makes sense. Okay. All right. <clears throat> and last question. Uh, why might one use a dial indicator versus a pair of calipers to measure circular runout? Think about calipers having two jaws that symmetrically approximate on two surfaces versus a dial indicator having a single probe that measures only one surface. Sure. Can we open up the note? <clears throat> so what I think would happen if we use calipers is I did that on purpose. So, if we have calipers, it's gonna measure the highest point and the lowest point, and it's gonna give me that measurement, as opposed to if I were using the dial indicator, it would give me all the measure well, the measurement of the highest point, and then it will not become in contact with the rest of the part. I think. Or depends where we set it in the first place. If we set it, oops. If we set it right here, it may be zero. Then it's not gonna be touching. Then it's gonna be a lot more pressure. Mm, I think the difference would be that this one gives me the reading all throughout the surface. While calipers, you have to go one surface at a time. Yeah, and, and there's there's opportunity to. Um to incorrectly measure something too. So if you if you have, uh, let's see, what would it look like? <clears throat> if you have maybe, maybe a shaft that looks like this, and I'm gonna draw it very exaggerated, but there's a, a bend in it like there. And let's say you're, you're holding it over here, and this whole thing is, you know, it's rotating 360 degrees, right? <clears throat> if, if, um, if you're using calipers, you're probably rotating this by hand because it would be kind of dangerous to put a pair of calipers right up against a, a part that's chucked up in a lathe and spinning really fast. So you're probably rotating this by hand. And if you were measuring, you know, like right here, you could, you could turn your calipers manually all the way around 360 degrees. And you might measure just one constant diameter, right? So you, you measure this with your calipers and you say, okay, that is diameter one, you know, whatever it is. Um, whereas if you have uh, a dial indicator and this is rotating in, in something that's uh, fixed to ground, like, like a lathe, um, you're going to be able to, to, uh, to measure that entire runout because you're just, you're probing on just one, one side. Not, not both sides at the same time and rotating around. So there's a potential for um, measuring something and thinking that it, the, the diameter is, is constant or that your circular runout is constant with calipers that uh, would be mitigated 
by using a dial, to be clear. Sounds good. All right. If you found this content helpful, consider enrolling in our signature program at mypipelineacademy.com. Whether you're an individual interested in beginning a new career as a mechanical designer or a company interested in training your new engineering hires, our signature program helps students develop the practical skills they need to be productive mechanical design engineers. Seating is limited. We hope to see you there soon.